Good morning, California, and uh, most of the United States, and uh, happy lunch to you, East Coast. Uh, I'm Andrea, and this is Ask Deanna Anything. Uh, my my dear pal, Deanna Baddorf, is here with us, and uh, she's here to answer your questions and also talk about some other fun, exciting uh, developments uh, and concepts today. Uh, how are you doing this uh, overcast morning, Deanna? I'm doing really good. And um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure people know who you are. So Andrea Foster is the director um, for uh, the Deanna Essentials and myself. And we're in, uh, we like to think we're in cahoots because <laughs> it's Honored to work when you're in cahoots together. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the masterminds and Andrea helps me with my, my visions and my concepts and like, where am I going with, you know, all of this education and health support? And so it's just really important to know, you know, there's someone who's um, one of my, you know, is kind of like my backbone and, and is really held by my, my side, you know, through a lot of thick and thins. So I just want to Give a shout out to you, Andrea, and, and just how lovely you look today. I mean, I'm really Aww. digging on this expression. Like, I'm really <laughs> digging on you expressing and, and letting yourself kind of be in this, like, shiny light. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You sit in the background really beautifully, and it's nice to have that. That's a gift, a talent, but it's not everything you are. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a few extras. <laughs> so hopefully um, with that introduction, you know, that's even a good place to start for today. And yes, I have great things to talk about while we wait. Mm -hmm. And we've got, uh, we've got oh. Molly here with us. Hi, Molly. And she's got a question whenever uh, we're ready that's to great. go with that. But um, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to preface what I just said to like everyone take a moment and just really consider who are those people that are your backbones in the world, you know, and sometimes you think someone is and then you have to kind of really give a good reflection and say, what are they really and what kind of backbone, because you don't want to expect everything from everybody. You know, it's kind of like what I say when somebody's like, I didn't get what I needed as far as health advice when went to the doctor and I'm kind of like, I think we need to remember that they're really good intervention and they're really good at dialing in a very targeted specific issue, like a disease state, but they're not really, and there's pathologists who would maybe be, you know, gasping right now. And if you are, please get a hold of me, <laughs> but they're not as good with pathology and connecting the dots and looking at the wholeness. And I'm hoping that gets in there more because I know doctors and people who are holding that in those places. You know, I think about Dr. Hannah, you know, I mean, like just people who do this. So who are your backbones and what kind of backbone? You know, are they in your professional world? Are they in your personal world? Are they family? And sometimes there's a lot of crossover and layers. And then it's important to remember we have those layers. And then how do you hold those in the world? So, you know, and hopefully Andrea, and I'm sure <clears throat> I'm not perfect at it, but hopefully, you know, I am on some level of backbone for you too. And, and hopefully boundaries are there, you know, like I do everything <laughs> I can beyond Saturday morning, <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> but like weekends off and like, how do you hold yeah. that with somebody else? You know, like for me, the Mondays, you know what I mean? For you, the Saturday, Sunday, like just take a moment and think about who are these people and what are the healthy boundaries? What have they told you is their time off and can you relate in that way? You know, <clears throat> and then sometimes it doesn't work, but at least you're trying. And I just think we'd be better people if we all just keep trying because it's not easy to do, you know? Um, but yeah, let's just look, take that moment, maybe make a little list of just a, a, a few people and it might even be those long-termers, you know? So yeah, I think it's a good way to start today. Mm. And it's interesting because why do I feel, oh, having an intuitive moment, why do I feel like on some level, and I love intuition because I have to put myself out there and I may not be right right now, but I'm willing to put myself 
stuff out there because I got a feeling between my head and my heart mm. that what I'm talking about has something to do with Molly's question. And it may not at all. But for some reason, I just have this feeling right now. I'm like, where are we at in a flow? Or why do I just all of a sudden feel like we're in a flow? So whatever it is, let's see. All right. Let's see where that connects. Uh, Molly asks, have you heard about folks taking probiotics and getting yeast infections? Reaper on the intuition. No, she <laughs> Who knows? Let's see where this goes. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Um, yes. So I have seen this with a specific strain. So I actually spent the last couple of years with Mary Sheila Ganella doing edible Ayurveda. Starts in September. And brilliant, brilliant class about anatomy, physiology, and the relation between emotions and physical body and food. And just really brilliant breakout breakdown. And so what I did is I chose probiotics and prebiotics, and I broke down 12 of the major ones instead of just looking at like, we need billions because when you take too many, they're very eruptive and they can even ferment and activate your food too much. And we need to know that we use yeast as a, you know, as a active ingredient to stoke, you know, fermentation. So if you have any yeast there and then you take really active or too many probiotics is the key to this question. I have found that things ferment too quickly and then it can, you know, create a hotter environment, more acidic environment in the gut for yeast to keep growing. Cause you know, fungus loves heat. That's why it gets in the armpits and down in the groin and on our feet that are in socks or, you know, that type of thing, you know, or toes. So yes, I do think there's a correlation, but I think the most common thing is taking too many too quickly and not time releasing those pre or probiotics. So like for instance, and, you know, and, and food probiotics are my daily care, but if I get sick or run down or stress comes at me, I then maybe want to supplement and if you're having a hard time with the food fermentations for just like maintenance, daily maintenance is food, but sometimes we get so stripped out, you know, and this goes to the question. Sometimes we get so stripped out that the food is like just enough to kind of help, but it's not getting you to a really prime, well-oiled machine way. And then what we do is we just like pack a whole bunch in there, but we don't think three months, hey, eat, eat, eat them on the days I'm not, take a couple of those pills in the fridge that I keep right in the front because I will bury those things so far back or I put my powder right with my vinegars and, you know, on my door. But, you know, that's kind of how I do it. And if you're really low, then, you know, it's just a matter of not trying to hit your system. I mean, if you started a community, because it's a community in there, if you start a community with too many people who want to be the leader, it's okay for a few people to learn how to work as a team leadership. I love team leadership, but you know, everyone's going to be on and that's like, and it's really just too much too soon. It's coming on a little too like, and then yes, we make too acidic of an environment. And if there's yeast present, you know, or there's that bread that goes in with the yeast or what I call the pint of yeast. So sorry for our you beer drinkers right now that I'm having to remind you that a pint of beer is a pint of yeast. I am so sorry. So, um, but it's true. And then you're putting it in there with an acidic base and then that is going to perpetuate the yeast. And if yeast isn't moving through, down and out through the intestines, so doing good purgation keeps yeast moving um, and it makes sure there's nothing pushing back those probiotics to make them get that eruptive in the stomach. But if you're really doing down and out, great. But if you are plugged up or you're holding in or you don't like to like poop in public and you're on the road or who knows what and you're withholding stool, 
then you, you know, are basically, everything's going to push out to the skin and to the tissues, mm -hmm. lymph, to blood, to muscle, to skin. But something that comes out of your skin, like yeast by odor or by cystic acne, or even some people just get like really bumpy rashes, you know, like a lot of the bumpy rashes people get right here is all on the intestinal line, you know, mm -hmm. and that's all, you know, part of this, like I've targeted that to yeast. So yeah, you can take too many probiotics and, and get yeast overgrowth. Um, but it's really like slow you go. And so I'm more about like, if you're stripped out, I'll put someone on probiotic pills. Like I'm like two a day, you know, take it with your aloe. Cause it's a great little cooling wet. It's hydrated and cooling, you know, makes a great, perfect little avenue for that probiotic to stay cool, calm and collected in their job. You know, it's, it's like, the calm bees doing their pollination versus the frenzied stressed out bees trying to like, we need to pollinate, you know? So think about that, a population, pollination, community building. And then there's one specific strain that I find is the most sugary strain that does make it the most nourishing though. So I'm not gonna say this is a bad strain because everyone's gonna be like, how do I never take Acidophilus again, it's in everything. No, it's about not packing a punch with it. We need it. It is one of the most team oriented, nourishing. Hey, everybody calm down. We can do this together. Very kapha. You know, it's wet and kapha and nourishing. That's why we find it in dairy and we find it in fats. We find it in things that are more cultured, you know, and there's a reason for that because it lives in a more nourished environment. But Dairy also has a whole bunch of galactose sugars and that is, you know, yeast forming um, sugar. And, and then you end up with a yeast related probiotic, you know? So <clears throat> I learned this from experience because I'm someone who really feel, felt drawn to acidophilus and I still love it. So I'm kind of like, let me just take a whole bunch of that acidophilus and see if I can get like one of those team oriented like leaders to get going in here. And what I found is it made me kind of yeasty. Like I'd get a little bit of a acne, you know, um, you know, and I'd be like, wait a minute, what's going on? I haven't changed anything else, you know? So I'd say acidophilus is the most nourishing. It comes and forms in dairy very easily that makes it more mucus forming. It makes it more yeast forming. And that might be something to, you know, consider in this is like, which ones? And then the one that I love, love, love that I kind of learned through my research and I've learned to love it is bif bifidus, you know, and really going with the like pitta, like, come on, let's do this. You know, we got work to do. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. So it's not super like, you know, why aren't we getting anything done? It's not like a negative pitta, you know, lead, you know, um, it's more of a like, you know, let, let me be your motivator. And it just really knows how to rally the troops, you know, rally around the community. So, you know, sometimes if somebody has yeast, I'm like, I feel pretty good about bifidus. It has low sugar. You know, I haven't seen it create yeast at all. Definitely not in my body. But acidophilus, yes. And sometimes lactobacillus. That's the other one that definitely can go into that more kapha yeasty zone, you know? But those are things that are gonna be on every list. You know, if you're getting like a total, you know, a total, you know, package probiotic, prebiotic, you know, by all means, those are gonna be in there. You just maybe want them not to be at the very top of the ingredients, you know? So, that's what I know. Um, there's some people who don't, that would never be able to say that healthy flora, healthy immunity, probiotics um, could cause a bacteria or a fungus. Um, but unfortunately, Molly is asking a good question because I have seen this happen and had to start looking at it. Cause I was like, you know, throwing a bunch of yummy stuff at my client and they weren't having the reaction we expected. And I have to be a good practitioner and be willing to reflect and be like, I don't need to feel guilty. I gave them something wrong. I was trying to help, 
but I'm human and you know, I don't, I'm not living in that body. <laughs> so it's a trial and error, but I like to be educated or well experienced in that concept. You know what I mean? But it's still, it'll be a trial and error for the rest of my practitioner life because there's always something new to learn. You know, I'm, I can't believe I'm this far in and I still have somebody who like a couple times a year, I'll have someone who comes in and I'm like, you have what? <laughs> I've never heard of that. That's still happening to me a couple times a year. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But it kind of keeps me alive. I'm like, what else is new? You know? So, yeah, that's what, I, what, what I'm feeling on that topic. And that's what I have figured out myself. I, I don't have a place for you to go. I don't have a research link. You know, I really am in... I'm in the trenches with clients and I'm using elemental medicine and Ayurved and Tibetan and multiple theories to lead my way. And mm -hmm. then I see what works and what doesn't work. And I, I'm almost like forming my own research, but you know, maybe some people would say, why don't you document that? But I do in my classes, mm -hmm. everything I teach in every class is me giving my research away and connecting it to something that's even bigger and older than me that I don't own at all mm -hmm. called Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. I'm not even from that country in this lifetime. So there's gotta be some respect to like pass it on <laughs> and don't take any ownership, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I love teaching to students becoming practitioners, you know, which, hey, by the way, I am going back to that. Y'all should yeah. know. I've been telling y'all along, I'm not gonna like, you know, hang out, doing nothing, you know, or just online. I'm loving online. I will keep my three courses, body mapping, birth alchemy, and edible Ayurveda. That's my jam. And those are my, my lovely teacher, co-teachers, loving it. Mm -hmm. But in person, come on, my hands, my hands yeah. ache to teach body work. And you can't learn pulse any other way. You can't learn pulse any other way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not giving that up. Pulse cannot nope. die. I'm sorry. No. It is getting lost. And I'm like, no, no, no. I can't do it on my watch. Mm -hmm. So please, mm -hmm. if you're one of my older students or a student of mine, please, please, please keep tapping in. Like, do not get into a rut where somebody's like, just give me the massage or just make mm -hmm. me a formula. No, just give me the food list. No, mm -hmm. you got to read their pulse. And the more you tap in, how did I get here? I didn't know anything. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know anything. I just literally made sure that it was just a foundation. Like someone can't get body work with me. They can't get a food list out of me unless they take a class and I've, you know, created container but uh -huh. you can't get away with not getting a pulse reading. I got to tap in and see what your blood, your heart song says. Uh -huh. so please students, remember, it's just someone's heart song. You just got to go in and sit and wait and listen. Sit yeah. and wait and listen. And it's like, and then all the things you learned, what are you listening yeah. to? What rhythm do you have? You know, remember the four golden rules, everybody? This is fun for anyone. Maybe I'll even get y'all wanting to learn pulse with me. But mm -hmm. four golden rules to pulse. What level am I? What what level am I on? What finger am I reading? What position is it in? What rhythm do I have? Pulse is a scientific equation of reading your blood cell analysis. And I love that it's the blood song or the heart song. It's like, I feel like I'm reading an instrument and telling someone what their song is. You know, mm -hmm. what's their song saying? Their body song. Ooh, I got to write that down. That was a good one. <laughs> body song. Sorry. Well, props to Eric, your student Eric, who has been organizing these pulse get togethers over in Occidental. I've been seeing posts about that. So I think there Eric's is a evil. little... Yeah, Eric there's Siegel a little contingent of folks. Yeah. I'm telling you, he has like taken this. And you know, he, he's only been doing this for, I don't know, what is it, Eric? Four years or something. But mm -hmm. uh, oh my gosh, he is definitely making me feel so happy 
so mm -hmm. happy as a teacher because he is just like he's he's like he's got it yeah and it's yeah. all practice practice and giving it up being willing to yeah. share information with somebody coming through you know For and sure. that's how I started flea market San Francisco yeah yep. speaking of teaching how's birth alchemy going Oh, birth alchemy is so wonderful. I can't believe I'm teaching with Terry. I mean, she's like literally one of my core sister, like depths, you know, soulmate in my life and just really important. And so, yeah. And I'm enjoying watching her shine because, you know, mm -hmm. she has done a lot of video and things and Mary Sheila Ganella helped me so much. She was just oh, like, no, nice. we're going to teach and you're going to get in front of here and I'm going to show you how to do it. And then she taught you too. So mm -hmm. we can like work this magic, you know, and she was, it helped a lot. And I'm like, how do I pass that on? Mm -hmm. And I was like, people need to know what Terry has to say. She is just one of the most brilliant, She's remarkable, like remarkable and just so well-rounded and and, uh, and just such a, a, a really sweet, pure spirit for me. And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I, it's just really exciting to see her shine and, and, um, and to be with her and, and to share these things around birth. And we're looking at all the different levels, you know, there's free birth, you know, and then the whole thing's about autonomy, you know, like being a, in the autonomy, like letting someone be in their process and, you know, and, and it's just so nice to be a container for that. And, but there's free birth and then there's home birth and then there's mm -hmm. birth centers and then there's hospital and there's really, you know, four main things. And then there's like, you can mix that up and even play with that. It's sort of like looking at hot, cold, wet, dry, and then, mm -hmm. you know, which one are you? And then wait, but that doesn't mean these aren't other options. I can get Vata, even though I'm a pit to Kapha. I could dry out too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I live in Sonoma County, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, just looking at those pieces and it's pretty cool. I think we're getting into the depths now. You know, nice. like module three is going to take us a little further and, and, you know, I, I won't uh, name names just for privacy, but somebody yesterday signed up late and I yes. emailed. Yes, I, emailed I saw that. You know, and yes. I was just like, yes, because I love yeah. her and I yeah. just want to keep yeah. being with her. So, yeah. It's not really too late because it's recorded no, and you can catch up for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I'm loving it. It's That's really, great. really good. It's great. And you've got yeah. something else very exciting happening in your backyard. Oh, I do. <laughs> that little I thing. Do. <laughs> I have uh, eight hours of uh, spending in my backyard today. And that's because uh, I have clients. And I said that I would be, you know, creating a space to continue being a practitioner. I won't be probably teaching much in this space. Who knows? Mm. We'll see. But this is where I am. I am in my backyard where I started. And I got to tell you, those were great days and they were complete. And I feel super, super <laughs> at home. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel, it feels right. And um my partner, Scott, we all know that he built that beautiful Deanna Center and mm -hmm. has been part of the Deanna Center with me for all 26 years of its existence. And so we packed away everything and brought home the most beautiful, most sacred of my pieces or my furniture, all my sacred tools, you know, my treatment room. And uh, he created you'll have to come see it Andrea you haven't seen I know it. I'm excited it amazing seriously it looks beautiful. and we put up a yurt I went back to having a therapeutic yurt and I it's feel so beautiful. good round spaces the beautiful you know skylight dome and mm. it's right outside of a grandma redwood that is just like oh. I mean thick and stable and like there so imagine oh. getting treatment with the like and it's right in the window and your head oh, faces this so red wood. And it's like, <gasps> yeah, yeah. So yes, 
I, I am back to doing my thing. And if anyone is interested, it is an option, um, but I do need to let you know that you might wanna speak up sooner than later because I'm booking October. Yeah, that's the that's the big <laughs> drawback is it's not instant. <laughs> it, I'm I'm not an instant presto, um, especially yeah. with not seeing 200 people a month. You know, mm -hmm. I'm back to kind of a individual one on one, and it takes some time. And yeah, it's been hard to limit some people too. Like I can only see you quarterly, and they're all what? Mm -hmm. I want to see you every month, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you got to save the every month for the people who need the every month. Because I yeah. have clients who, you know, are in situations where mm -hmm. uh, their life even depends on that month to month with me and a team around me. Right. So I also have that, like, you know, if you're waiting it out, you know, I'm going to easily give you a list of practitioners who are in this area or where you live. If there is one mm -hmm. target, what kind of body work could you be getting and what kind of care could you be doing? before that appointment, you know? Yes. So you come into it getting the most out of me and the most ready. Um, and then when I'm not available, you know who else to go to. Mm -hmm. you know? There's some I'm remarkable so practitioners. Mississippi, because I don't know anyone there. But yeah, let's change that. Because I'm on the travel now too. Yeah, so, come on, Mississippi, talk to us. I know, I mean, <laughs> seriously, someone come yeah. and study with me. <laughs> <laughs> and set up camp and then I'll tell everyone you're there. You'll have a built-in clientele. Oh yeah. Anybody oh, who definitely. studies with me at this point, you can get a built-in clientele after because mm -hmm. it just becomes you being a referral and we need yeah. them. Yeah. So yeah. Any other questions? We are um, ready and waiting. Okay. Uh, we've yeah. Um, so why don't you also um, talk a little bit about one of the topics that uh, has been coming up for you this month around um, remembering about reusable uh, and sustainable methods. Um, we, we definitely can't forget, uh, especially th with this drought. I mean, so much water goes into manufacturing um, and certainly a lot of the onus is on the companies to uh, figure this out, but even as consumers, um, I know that's a, it's a subject close to you. It is. And it's, and it's a daily struggle. Um, it's interesting. My, I just gave my sister body work yesterday and I don't see her more than like once a year and she's visiting. She just left right before we started this. And Aww. it's just so nice to be able to take care of my own sister and make sure she's here on the planet for her children. And, mm. and uh, we ended the conversation this morning, even on the same concept of plastic. And I was talking about how I really try to look around my home and I try to have a deep awareness. I can't completely avoid it, but I have this deep awareness of like, how much plastic can I get out of my life? And if I do need to use plastic, like a grocery bag, you know, um, you know, how many times can I reuse it? And how well can I take care of that plastic mm -hmm. so that it is reusable as many times as I can possibly make it reusable? And I notice, you know, um, you know, and we're allowed to take bags back into the grocery store. We're allowed yep. to take our own bags back. So like we need yes. to get back in a habit, you know, um, of making sure we're really uh, doing that, like taking back. In fact, it's funny. I was out to dinner with Molly and we had the same conversation the other night. Mm -hmm. So interesting enough, you know, um, just about like, she's like, I, I, you know, I feel silly. Remember this Molly? She was like, I feel like I go to the store and I've got all these little plastic bags and I've got my containers and then I got my larger bag and, and we were, you know, I was reflecting on like, yeah, I do that too. And interesting enough, I never really see anybody else doing it. Yeah. So I'm excited to be like, kind of oh, yes. And I know there are people, you know, yes. and I could name some other people I know who do it, but we should really be making a practice of this. That is yeah, your rolls of plastic sitting up there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those bags a day. Mm -hmm. And then the water bottle, the water bottle, 
you know, and how beautiful yeah. water is when you love your water bottle. You don't love mm. your water in plastic. You drink it because you're supposed to, or you're thirsty. But if I have a beautiful water bottle or I love mason jars and then, you know, mm -hmm. I just put all my herbs in there. So I'm looking at this beautiful, fresh herbal water in a, in a, mm -hmm. you know, nice mason jar. That's like preservation. That's what we do with yeah. mason jars. We preserve. So to me, when I put my water in mason jar, I'm like, oh, this is like canning with my mom. And we were preserving mm -hmm. things to get through the yeah. winter. You know, instead of buying like, you know, I'm, you know, frozen mango in the middle of winter in a plastic container in the freezer. And then I'm kind of like, ah, I don't even want to get my food in plastic. And it can yeah. be almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah. You very know? And then I want to save money, but where I might go to save the money, like Trader Joe's, I'm, I feel energetically okay with that food. I love their yeah. creative artistic concepts around Oh, food. yeah. And they we can just get them to stable, reduce the packaging. But the packaging, I'm like, oh, and then we can't just do or hope we can go back to bulk because, you know, we're looking yeah. at iron loads and contagious yeah. factors. And, and we don't need to, we don't want to stop looking at that. Like that should have yeah. already been being looked at. Mm -hmm. which is why in other cultures they wear masks not just because of pollution but you know we have pollution too you yeah. know go to nepal yeah. everyone's in a mask everyone yeah. Delhi, everyone's in a mask why it's polluted yeah. <laughs> you know and we might want to think about that and then you know it changes the contagious factor long term so this mm -hmm. idea that nobody has to wear their mask anymore i'm like oh where are we going like, yeah we, we just need to be careful here <laughs> There's other variants and there was already yeah. viruses and we are overpopulated, which makes more viruses. Mm -hmm. And it's just the reality that we should still be thinking about how clean are my hands, how clean, how many things am I touching? You know, maybe it's not a bad idea to wear masks in a store. <laughs> so I like not having the flu this year. It was really I great. I mean, most people I worked with all year round were less like I have a cold or I yeah. have a flu. It's brilliant. So I just think, you know, there's some things we need to, you know, think about. Um, and maybe I just went off a little off the tangent of plastic, but for some reason, I think it took me to the grocery store. That's and then where my, it comes. And then my mask came in and how yeah. I want to like still, you know, and it's also yeah. boundaries, it's boundaries and being able to be like, this is my space and there's nothing wrong with my space and I can even still be friendly. I love people. People see a smile behind that mask. I smile and they smile back. I'm yeah, so they can see it in your eyes. smiling to everybody. Yeah. Is, you know, I just think it's very powerful to mm -hmm. make sure we are still being like, hi, you know, you're a human. You know, yeah. I love you. I, it's okay. We're in this together and we need to be able to stay connected, but have our boundaries. And that goes into plastic and excess use and consumption. And it also goes into sharing space mm -hmm. and making sure that we're really taking care of earth and taking care of humans. We got to look at these things that are so we're in the foundations you know these mm -hmm. are like foundational right and i am kind of like oh save save all the humans and not for the sake of the earth i'm not sure i'm fully on board with that and that right. i'm talking about my life you know what i mean like literally putting my own life on the line you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just what how do we change that so we're not saving ourselves and making waste to do it. Mm. So I, I think it's an important thing to think about every day. Right, right. And speaking of um, imbalance and environmental impact, Molly yes. has a comment here. Um, she said she heard someone say that they quit taking collagen because they heard it fed cancer. What do you make of that? Oh, that's interesting. How mm -hmm. would that And I have to wonder if it's like the source of the collagen. It's typically animal sourced. Yeah, that's a good point. 
Um, that's interesting. So I'm giving it a moment because I haven't heard this before. So, you know, I'm having to like stargazer Lee, I have to grok it. <laughs> yes. I got to take a moment and grok this. Um, first off, when I think of just where collagen is, well, it's interesting. And I think I'm going with what you're saying, Andrea. So there's a lot of people and, and, and Molly knows this conversation. There's a lot of people in the cancer realm who believe that meat is really going to destroy them. You know, like it's going to be the destruction, the demise of the cancer. And, mm. and I'm not saying that's in a, that's wrong, you know, on some level, I think then we have to think about quality. We have to think about quantity and source, you know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. that's where things look different and what it creates collagen. But then when I look at cancer in being a depletive disease, literally people waste away. So it's like full right. depletion, not unlike most autoimmune disorders also. Um, and when I look at it that way, what I have found is for me to keep these building blocks alive in somebody, collagen, hyaluronic acid, and lecithin. These are the building blocks and they're the easiest place to get them is from any flesh or egg, you know, things that are from animal, you know, um, and fish. And so for me to keep this person, making sure they don't lose any more weight has been a clear deciding factor and whether somebody is more near death versus staying alive. So when I look at cancer, I can say, how many inflammatory foods can I get out of this person's diet? This is a fiery, it's a pitta vata. It's hot and dry or dry and hot. And how nourished, and that's how we put out a fire, and how cooling can I get this person? But if I over alkaline them, they start losing weight. And then that has proven to me not to have been the smartest thing for that person to do or for me to even help them do. And again, I learned from experience, you know, so I've seen how someone went down a little quicker and had to come to terms with that. You know, I'm not in charge. Destiny is belongs to them, but I have learned from those things. So for me to say, I don't want you eating a whole bunch of chunks of meat. You know, I don't want you to get too much meat but I do want you on collagen. I want you on lecithin. I want you on hyaluronic acid, bone broth and mm -hmm. fish and runny egg yolk eggs. Those things give you the hyaluronic acid, the collagen, the lecithin compounds and keeping them at the weight they're at is been, been the most pivotal thing that I have figured out to do that has kept them, mo if, if it's in the cards, it has kept them mm -hmm on the planet. And my job is to do anything I have to, instead of just saying acidic is going to destroy you. Nothing acidic. Meat is acidic. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, and when so I'm like, are you craving meat? And someone will be like, I want some raw liver so bad. I could like kill someone. And I'm like, that's the need for blood. <laughs> yeah. That's the need for blood. Liver cravings are serious, true, cravings for the person who is getting way too depleted and bottoming out. And then I will say, let's find you a really good source. And then that takes us back to the main question of like, is it that collagen is good or bad? Isn't it more quantity quality, which is like the foundations of Ayurved. Quantity quality is the foundation of how Ayurveda sees consumption of food and taking in plants and medicine. How much do you actually need for you? Is it the right one for you? So, you know, who needs what and when do they need it? And how much do they need? And was it the right quality? So I think you targeted the answer. I'm just giving you the explanations, but you targeted the answer right there with being like, well, what kind of collagen are they taking? Where did it come mm -hmm. from? You know, and maybe I think collagen alone is like taking you know, magnesium for the rest of your life alone, when really, you know, we give me a food that has just collagen in it. Give me right, a food that right. only has magnesium in it. You can't. They're yeah. in perfect balances, all individual, just like our unique selves. 
And so I, I think that's a little bit of a, a big statement and there's a whole bunch of details in there. So what kind are you getting? How much are you taking? Smarter to do collagen in food and not a pill or a powder. Honestly, I'm amazed at how many people I'll say, I would rather you do two cups of bone broth a day, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the powder. And I'm like, the powder will work, but it's a particulate. Like it's one. Yeah. Unit. Yeah. You don't have the other things you need around it. Collagen is, I mean, look at it. We got this texture. Be I got muscles because of collagen. So mm -hmm. how much of a, you know, could that be hard to break down? So collagen, right. slow you go. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the probiotics. Mm -hmm. um, right. So I, as I'm talking, I'm realizing that's the answer. There's no way I could say publicly right now that I agree with that statement when mm -hmm. collagen has been such a very important uh, part of keeping somebody sustained and actually having meat on their bones to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen it go inflammatory as many people as I've given collagen. I actually have never seen it do that, but I'll start looking. Mm -hmm. I'll start looking at that. I have two lovely people in my life I'm working with who are, are on my monthlies and I have them on collagen. And there is some inflammation that I have not been able to figure out how to reduce. I'll give it a go. And, mm -hmm. and, and see if I notice anything and I'll report back if I do, because you know, who knows, there might be some finding there. Right. Right. Yeah. Joshua has uh, joined us. It's been a minute since I last saw him, but glad to see him and that he's Hello. here. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Any All questions? right. Um, <laughs> We are still open to questions. Um, maybe Joshua's got one too. Um, so what's it? growing right now in your garden? Well, not as much as people would think. <laughs> well, it's pretty dry. Yeah. yeah. And, and not only dry, just, you know, uh, I have been very busy with all life changes and mm -hmm. keeping very present with it. Um, and setting up my beautiful space here. So what I can tell you is I have some beautiful California white sage and I've been really giving a shout out to my California white sage because as much as I have neglected this garden and just barely kept it going because just all my energy has been somewhere else. Um, that plant is like, I am here. I am here. I am going nowhere. Even if I go down to the tiniest, I'm going to regrow myself. It's just such a resilient plant. And I've been spending mm. time with it only because I have a long history with California white sage in my herbal career. It's one of the earliest plants I found and um, as an antifungal actually. Mm -hmm. And um and it's just interesting that uh, it just wants to be around no matter what. And it grows in very arid desert related places. And I think about that resilience and I was actually with the plant yesterday kind of thinking about this sitting out on the deck at the yurt and I was just looking at it and I was like, you're not only resilient in this garden, you're resilient in in, you know, in general. And I wonder how many places have you propped up and found your way back to the earth surface with sun in the Palm Desert, in Palm Beach? Because I used to go from Albuquerque to here um, and I would harvest on my way from Albuquerque, California, visiting my family. And then I'd go back and I'd harvest, you know, the whole time. And there were literally mountains and mountains, hills of California white sage. Wow. Just old, like old growth. They look like old growth uh, grapes, you know, vines. Wow. And they're just like mm -hmm. out and crooked and they're just like, and they're like, you know, in just rocks, like mm -hmm. no water in the middle of the desert, you know? I mean, we all know Palm Beach looks like an oasis and it's not, right? So like, what are we gonna do about that water use? <laughs> you know, what are they gonna do about that water use? You know, we don't need that many lawns nobody's sitting on <laughs> when it's a desert. 
Um, but it grows in these arid places where it is, you know, like I'll do anything, I'll stay. Well, the sad thing of the story is uh, about, I think it was probably, it was pre-downtown. I was at Atkinson Road. So I think it was like mm -hmm. 15 years ago. And I went to Albuquerque and did a trek back. And I was like, that is my power place. I can't wait. I was just like, I can't wait. I can't wait. I got there. Stripped in condos. Everywhere. Oh. Gone. Gone. Oh. Gone. I could not find a plant. I went hiking around these houses. I was like, I want to see if they're even in the same end. You know what I mean? Like, did someone keep one in their backyard? Did Mm. Yeah, I didn't look at anyone's backyard, but I'm just saying, I was yeah. like, really, yeah. like, can I find Insane. one to say hello? Mm. And I could not. I could not. And it just really, it hurts me to this day when I think about it. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just don't have that anymore, you know? And I don't want to just be all, you know, going on a downer. But that was a big eye opener. And that's what took me yeah. into the like, plastics and how do we say you know the earth and you know what does that really mean because that's just such a big mm -hmm. huge thing that we can't achieve what are the little pieces right. in there everyone can do but i was thinking about that yesterday so that's what is talking to me in the garden is mm -hmm. i'm like man i wonder if i went back to those condos <laughs> would you have propped back up have you come back up after 15 years you and never know. Recognize you. Mm -hmm. Did someone mm -hmm. pull you like a weed? Hopefully they smelled you first. Yeah. Because if they smelled you, touched you, they'd be like, I don't want to let that plant go. Yeah. You'd like to hope. So good. So, so Joshua does have a question for yes. us. Yeah. Um, you'll recall his property is pit a hot coffee web. Okay. And he, He's asking, uh, he's got a rashy area on his upper and lower right eyelid. Okay. He's been putting coconut oil on it uh, because it seemed dry and hot, but he's not sure where it's coming from. So uh, any okay. further potential on this one? And it's on the eyelid and under the eyelid. Upper and lower. Upper and lower. Okay. So first off, can you tell, or we can find out, and I'll talk about that placement and what that could be looking like, but I am mm -hmm. curious if it's really dry or if it's wet. We know it's inflamed because it's red, but I'm He said really it seems dry and it hot. It does. Yeah. Okay. Because that's an important thing. Is it within your mm -hmm. constitution, pitta kapha, right. or is it, you know, something that's drying out? Okay. So a couple things I would try to rule out or rule in. One would be that you got some kind of chemical burn and it's taking a long time to heal. Like you painted a room, but you didn't think about the fact that you got some paint on there, you know, or, you know, had some exposure of some new chemical or something you used in the yard. Cause even organic things you use in the yard are chemicals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we have to keep that in mind with the cannabis world too. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's not yeah. just all organic. There's still a bunch of chemicals being made that go in there. Mm -hmm. And so whatever, you might want to just rule that in or rule that out. Like think, you know, when did it start? What was going on? Um, it doesn't have to just be ongoing chemicals in your life. It could be a contact and now you can't get that allergen to slow down. Mm -hmm. Uh, irritant. The next one is the allergen. So allergies, early stage allergies and new allergies show up very often in the eyes. So someone long-term will know they get weepy, 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 but early stage allergies show up a lot in the eyes because the eyes, alochak pitta, are connected to yakrut pitta, which is your liver. <laughs> so your liver is connected to your eyes. And if the liver can't process an allergy or a chemical, you're going to have fire rising and it rises through the eyes. Our vision is part of our pitta. So mm -hmm. could there be an early stage allergy? Like all of a sudden you really got into bread and you weren't eating any, or all of a sudden you're like loving this cheese, this new cheese you found, but maybe it's, you know, uh, not working and it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. food like what's pollinating around your house you know uh, what's sprouting up right now and you might want to consider like hmm, 
hmm, I wonder if I'm allergic to that, you know? So mm -hmm. there really could be a gonna go away, you got a slight allergen. If you have a slight allergen, a really good way to know is not to put any oils on this. You never put oils on a rash or redness or a flare uh, of the skin. Oils can go other places, but not on the skin. But I would do the allergy remedy, um, which is lavendin um, or lavender. You probably have both right in your house with hanging mm -hmm. out with me. And, you know, 10 drops every morning, every night, take it with a half a cup of aloe every morning, every night and see if you can calm down the histamine response. Um, because that's my favorite thing about lavendin. Um, lavender will do. Um, is just antihistamine all day long in really nice, you know, simple form. Uh, but if it starts calming down your eye in a couple days, then something's up. And then there's another thing, it could be contact fungal. So it could either be that you got in contact with fungal and you've got, you know, cling, you got a cling on, <laughs> you got a fungal cling on <laughs> and it just isn't healing because there's a moisture in the eyes. So it could be a contact fungal um, or it could be literally that you've got more fungal yeast load in your urinary tract and in waterworks. And why am I going there? Why am I all of a sudden going to urinary waterworks? Because our whole face is a map mm. and oh, wait till you see what Ray has created. The new face map is yes. beyond. Oh, stunning. Oh my God. It's so beautiful. It's in the mm -hmm. birth alchemy course, but I'm getting ready to go public with it. Woo. Mm -hmm. And under the eyes Amazing. is kidney and our eyelids are bladder. So mm -hmm. bladder and kidney is right here. Outer eye is usually more liver related, gallbladder liver related um, with allergies. And if it's anywhere in here, you know, you may have more yeast that's gotten into your urinary tract. Um, you do identify male unless anything has changed <laughs> and feel free to do so. <laughs> but, you know, um, we know that men get a lot of yeast up through the genital urinary, like through the penis and into the bladder and then up into the urinary tract. Otherwise you could get it from having yeast overgrowth in the gut and it's starting to get a little further out into the urinary system. And you might be having a hot, but usually it would be wet, let me be honest. And that's why mm. I asked, but hot, wet would usually tell me there's more of a, of a internal yeast that's presenting on these nerve endings because the face map is all nerve endings. So mm -hmm. I think a bladder kidney I think of maybe yeast, either contact or in the body. And then I think of just a simple old little allergy. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it doesn't become a, a long-term thing. Mm -hmm. And um, those are some of the ideas. The only other one you might want to think of is our 12 cranial nerves are behind our eyes. So if you're having a high stress or you're having any little eye twitches, or you're feeling like, whoa, I'm a little stressed out where I can't see well enough, or you're really tired, you're not sleeping well, mm -hmm. there is a chance, you know, the, the eyes are telling you a nerve stress because a lot of people's nerves run through their eyes. Yes. And they show it. I mean, we show our stress in our eyes, but some people mm -hmm. go physical with that. So mm -hmm. if you can really say, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I always know I'm on the edge when I get an eye twitch. Same. I do get, you do too? Oh, yes. Oh, we've never yeah. talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Bought it dry. So yeah, it's going to happen. in our new emails now. Eye twitching. Got to go. No, should <laughs> Right. <laughs> Took it too far. Eye twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's a real thing, you mm -hmm. know? And I'm always like, whoa, whoa, where am I at? When I'm all, which eye? Which um, eye? Left. Um, usually, usually left. And yeah. do you know that I noticed that most people with eye conditions have a weaker left? I don't know why. And Ooh, interesting. allergies, think about a friend right now with allergies who gets eye stuff. Almost always they have more redness or more weeping on the left. Wow. 
Oh. And then I notice eye twitches are more commonly on the left when I ask which one and you just that answer. That is interesting. Too. Huh. I don't know what that's about. I mean. That's you know, it's feminine right side. Brain. Am um, I remembering? Is that feminine side? It's the feminine side and it's the right brain because we have a crossover. You know what I mean? Um, but right. it is the, right. the feminine side, you know, and, you know, but. <laughs> feminine or masculine either one feels like it could yeah yeah the effect is well so it's interesting more bone broth hydrate better the liver is on the right and it its nerves cross over to the left right just as the spleen is on the left and it crosses over and expresses so maybe mm -hmm. but i just find Something. that interesting it is yeah. it is so but as far as uh, inflammatory response, it sounds like there's some general maintenance things that Joshua could be doing. A little Lever, bit of the histamine, aloe. hydrate, protect your eyes, and right. then start looking at some of the, the basics, like what's changed in the last yeah. six months. And I don't sell this, but if it was fungal, mm. GSE rocks topical fungus. I cannot, right. I, you know, I mean, it, that stuff. Grape seed concentrate. Fungus. Yes. Mm -hmm. GSC concentrate. And you can just take a couple drops and just, it would be safe on the eyes too. Just kind of dab, okay. you know, but I have people like rub it on their arm where they have tinea. And if it starts taking this away, if GSC takes it away, you're going to be sure fire that there's a fungal. And mm. then you have to think if it's only topical or is it internal? Interesting. And for men, how do they know if they have yeast in their system? Like women know they have yeast in their system. We have right. an open how does that the vagina up? and we move yeah. that right through and then we're all, oh. Yeah, yeah. So men only know when they ejaculate and they read their fluids um, or since genital urinary tract, since the urinary tract runs right through the penis, and shares with the reproductive cloudy urine or urine that smells mm. yeasty, you know, which is like yeasted bread. You know, if you have right. that kind of sweet yeasty smell, you have cloudy urine. I can almost guarantee that that's a picture for yeast overgrowth that's gotten into the urinary tract. So, you know, and men don't have a lot of ways to track yeast. No one's talking to them about that. Like jock itch is yeast, athlete's foot, is yeast, just like toe fungus, same yeast, same fungal. They're not even different one. Tinea is a different one, different fungal. And there's like a hundred different types. You know, there's the white, the brown and the red types. Look them up online, you know? So, so um, but you know, those are things that men don't get to have conversation around as much. Like jock itch is normal. It's like, that means yeast is normal. Right. You know? So those are some of the ways uh, you could track that if that's the truth. But for some reason, why do I think there's some chemical reaction? That's my well, hunch, Josh. That's my hunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hunch well, he's. There was some <laughs> chemical reaction. I don't know. Well, he says he's not very, um, he doesn't always protect his eyes when he's making jewelry and you know how he works with semi-precious stones. And I thought maybe some particulate matter is kind of drifting up. Oh my gosh. Up. And you might want to be careful too, is that like, I, I'm pretty sure Josh, don't you work with all silver, right? Like, isn't it silver or, or is it copper or is there any aluminum, copper, lead? Right. Any heavy metals can do it. Yeah. Well, if you're working that with your hands without gloves every day, you could get heavy metals in your skin. People get them from chemicals, working in chemicals. Right. It, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but heavy metals are transdermal, only long-term. Right. But they are transdermal long-term, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. if you're sweating or have, if you run hot in your hands. And I remember your massage hands, by the way. Those massage hands have some warmth in them and they have some really good pitta strength. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I wonder if, you know, you get overheated or you start sweating a little, your pores are open. 
and then you're working with those metals. Yeah. You know, a heavy metal panel. Great smoking yeah. labs. You can do it yourself. Send in yep. your hair. But well, he and Julie miss you and uh, are sending good wishes. Looks like he's got a little ha- homework to do and in, in sleuthing oh, it out. I love you both so much. I do miss mm. you too. And, you know, to be honest, this is going to sound, it's quite interesting, but just like, I think it was maybe not even two weeks ago, Scott and I were looking through a whole bunch of pictures and we were looking at one of the parties we had thrown at the Deanna oh. Center and we saw the two of you. So I'm like, yeah. I can't believe you're here right now because literally Scott and I were like, oh my God, Julie and Josh. Like, you know, just, yeah. I just want you to know it really warmed our heart and we both uh, care about you very much, Scott included. So it's really nice. Maybe, maybe we called mm-hmm. you in by looking at your picture. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Well, whichever, whichever it was, I'm glad Thank uh, we've, you. uh, and, uh, not to forget Martha is here too, uh, Hi, watching too, but we're so glad to have had such fun friends with us today. Um, it's about that time. This has been such a multifaceted episode. Um, uh, so, uh, Can I please say follow- just a couple oh. other shout outs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Did I just cut you off. Were you going to say oh. something more? Just wrapping it up. Okay. Well, <laughs> we got a big day. <laughs> <laughs> just for a second. I have a couple things I just think is good because, you know, with the Deanna Center being gone and me not being gone and mm-hmm. our store online not being gone, you know, I want to remind everyone, you know, we're different, but we're not gone. But what I really want to share is I told everyone I keep giving you updates. And just so you know, Bliss opened the self-care sanctuary. Yes. And they have a continued membership. And if you get treatment, you can go. And you can also rent it as a group. You can get a group together and create your own pod. So Bliss has reopened the self-care sanctuary with our support and help. And, um, and as is. I mean, you go in there because I've been going in there. You go in there and like, it just looks like the bathhouse. It looks like everything you remember and it's quieter. (laughs) You know what Mm. I mean? So it's like really like almost like the good old days. Remember that Julie and Joshua? (laughs) It's like the good old days in there. But um, Bliss has the sanctuary. Please go in and visit. Uh, You know, don't play any little head games with yourself. Like you miss the Deanna Center so much that you don't have access to the same healthcare, you know, like it's still there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then know that if you haven't been into Rosemary's Garden, um, my entire Deanna Essentials product line is right in the window, front and center. so exciting. And I'm actually going to be doing some pulse readings there, but we haven't planned the schedule yet, Ooh, but just, be, you know, and it's probably October, um, uh-huh. but I will probably be there through the holidays for, you know, times. Um, and I'm going to be doing some little mini pulses and making sure people know how to access me easily. Um, but my products are there, all the yeah. gua sha's and the spices and the products. So, and then I'm also doing Banyan Botanical Blogs. So I am very That's honored. That's the big news. I am very honored. And Kevin, the owner, founder, you know, I have, you know, he's the one I lived with after I came back from India when I was studying with Dr. Laud. And then my my bedroom became Banyan Botanicals. It's like amazing. I have the longest history you could think of with this company, <laughs> literal conception yeah. um, in my room. <laughs> So I just love them. I can't believe what they've done in all these years. I'm just like, wow. Mm-hmm. And to be starting to write some blogs for them and get more involved just makes me super happy. So yeah. I think the first yeah. one's due out August and we have a series yeah. of three. Um, so, you know, look for those. And I just want to give a shout out to what an integrous company they are. So I, I would yeah. buy anything from them. Yeah, their stuff is so good. So good. Yeah, top so, quality. Those are my shout outs. Mostly That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, please do follow us on Facebook or Instagram or here on YouTube as well. Uh, if you like what you saw, 
Be sure and subscribe and hit notifications so that you will know exactly when Deanne is back. Uh, she will be back again in two weeks to answer your questions. Do submit them on Instagram, Facebook, and on our website. We've got a little form and any question, as I hope you're seeing, uh, Deanna loves to hear about new conditions, new situations, and, and to support you wherever you're at. All right, many uh, closing words for us today, Deanna. Thank you all. And may you have a plastic free day. <laughs> Yes, give it a shot. <laughs> Do everything you can <laughs> to get to that being a truth in your life. So, yeah.